I think we're ready to start. Okay, hi. Um, it is the 19th of January, 2021. And look, we say always in January, I have to look at the calendar and make sure I've got the year right. Um, what we're listening to right now is um, a piece that's being generated uh, by, by a, a program that I pro I coded in a thing called pure pure data pure data pure data and as you could see in the other screen okay welcome my name is Gordon Bazali I am also known as Dan Zeit and I am your nerd for today and we are working with pure data 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 I'm gonna say I always say data because the tutorials I watch the guy says pure data this australian guy i can't remember his name right now i should remember i should write it down because he's got some great videos put out in the last few years and he's really good at explaining how things work um, in pure data and i've learned almost everything i know from him and a couple others on youtube but anyway if you just search pure data it's a pure it's a um it's a programming language for composers, musicians, um, sound people. If you're working with sound design, um, it's really a very useful. If, if you like control, if you're not fully um, satisfied with your packaged plugins that you use with, um, with your DAW or anything, or if you, you want something that just works in a certain way and you're not afraid of getting down to the nuts and bolts of, of how does it actually work and, and you might and uh, I learned I've been learning so much about synthesis and about how you know the physics of sound and sine waves and how tables of data work and all this stuff it's just really been fun to, to, to learn this this program and you put together what you see here. Um, this is not the whole thing that we're listening to. I'll, I'll explain it. I'll, this is the whole thing, pretty much. But it's one of the smaller, but the fewer number of uh, commands and uh, objects that I've done. This is maybe the f fifth or sixth thing that I've done. I actually put out an album recently where I've, most of the source recordings are generated through this this kind of thing but this is a new this is a new uh, patch that I'm working on called the fog machine and as it says it's a real-time ambient glitch generator and I'll show you what makes it I mean, there's more to it than what you're hearing um, let's maybe get into it let's change the screen a little bit and see what's going on okay so this is a bigger screen so up here I think you can see my cursor can you maybe not now you can okay the box up here that says recording that's the first step well let's let's turn off the fogger right now let's start at the beginning what this is, is it's, it's kind of three things. It's a recorder and it splits up the recording into four seconds. What you're seeing here in these four uh, arrays here, they call them arrays, uh, basically the, the sound is, uh, you can see the beginning of it. It's um, what it sounds like after it records and the thing about the recording thing it's it, there's so much to talk about here i just i don't know where to start so what it'll do is take sound in from my audio input output device and i've got my guitar here plugged in to it and I can listen, I can monitor the guitar. 
I think you can hear that. Yes. Um, it might be loud on your end, but anyway. It will listen to this, and then it is, it's supposed to be, it's supposed to trigger recording when it reaches a certain threshold. So when I arm record here, it will take what's loud enough and it will start recording and it will throw the recording into these um, arrays. Basically just the first second goes here, second second goes here, third second, fourth second. And, um, and the one that's in here already that I did last night, it's still here. I can, I think I can just play the raw sample of the first second. Okay, there's the first second, second. And the fourth. Okay, so you can see those are just basically four seconds of sound that are cut up into four bits. And I did that because I want to deal with these segments of the sound separately. So then now that it's got these sound bits saved in its own memory, then we can deal with it. Then it sends them down into uh, what I call the fogger. And the fogger just uh, takes, uh, first of all, it's this glitcher here. I've got it so that it's it kind of randomly chooses when and how to play back tiny bits of what we just heard. And it will play back, um, it'll play back in different speeds. And I've got it so that uh, it'll change the pitch, the speed. Uh, so if, we, if we're just playing it at a factor of one, that's, you could think of it as speed times one, which is the same thing. This is the normal speed forward. If you say speed two, that's twice the speed, which will raise it by one octave and quicken it by, you know, by two. And then if you go 0.5, that lowers it uh, by an octave but still going forward and it slows it down. I'm sorry, it slows it by an octave. And uh, yeah. And if you start using negative numbers, it starts to play the, the segment in reverse. I don't have it set up to really show that exactly right now, but it'll also, it also chooses this part here by my window, will randomly shuffle through which second it's going to chew on. And also there's this there's a sort of scattering thing where I have it randomly choose random length bits of within each second and it kind of jumps around. So it, it's gonna it's gonna glitch it up a lot. Because we're taking it, chopping it up and rearranging it and playing it back in different order. And if you want to watch this this purple bits um, indicator uh, which which sample it's taking from and over here the, the horizontal one is going to show what is it doing is it playing uh, is zero means it's not going to play anything so it's not going to be constantly glitching out there will be space between the the, the playback glitches and after it's glitched everything then it sends it through this s s stands for send send audio play and then it's picked up that the the glitching that's going on at random is thrown into a mixture of um, reverb and echo effects, and these echo effects can be uh, reverb and echo can be manipulated uh, by some of these controls. And they're already looking not not already looking weird. Um, they're already working kind of so it throws it in here and it bounces it around left and right channel and uh, there's a it randomly uh, it, it periodically will freeze the tail of the um, reverb which I like it's something that I really like freezing the tail of a, of a reverb kind of makes it kind of hang out it's very ambient and and when it's done 
chewing on it. Um, it's always being fed more glitches to, to sort of mess with. So it's not going to sound too weird. Uh, like you already heard a bit of it. This is what's going on. Um, yeah, can we do this? Okay, sometimes I have to hit bypass on this reverb when I can see by this uh, VU indicator that things are going a little loopy in the background, but we're not hearing it for various reasons. So now that the reverb has calmed down through the echo, or I can turn it back on. Maybe bump that up a little bit. So you can you can hear it's taking little bits, and some of it sounds higher because it's being sped up by an octave. Some of it's lower. So that's, that's basically how it works. The cool thing about it is that you don't have to be bored by this. If you don't like what's going on, you can in real time throw sounds into it without, you know, hands off. I can, I can set this up to, it'll only listen to what I'm deliberately playing and then it'll throw that into the process in real time and I don't have to be I don't have to have my hands on the on the program the program will handle everything so I'll show you what that how that works so even while it's playing I can let's see I can audition sounds without you know if I want to go that's just I'm auditioning that on the guitar so I don't know it's going to, so I'm gonna play something now and it's going to throw it into these four boxes at the top and you'll see, you'll see that as it happens. So let's, let's, let's just try something. And then it stops recording when it, when it drops below a certain level. And now it's going to start chewing on those four segments. And we're hearing something different now. And I can affect different things like um, how often the glitches occur. And sometimes when things get weird, it'll take the weird and chew on that, like it's doing right now. Not too sure why it's doing this. Probably because I changed something in stream. Ooh, that's wild. Okay. Okay, something weird is happening. Oh, I know why. It's because of this. It's freaking out. We should come back to normal now. The, my problem with it right now, I'm not finished with it. I just I just kind of make a made a breakthrough with it last night and started to do what I wanted it to do. But there are things that I can improve with it. I, th I'm, I want to add a, a pan sweeper. I'd love to hear things. I mean, we're hearing things in right and left channel in the center and things, but I'd like to have it feel like there's more motion going on. So I want to add a function that sort of randomly sweeps around. I've done that in, in the past where it kind of sweeps between the left and right channel. In, I'll try to do it in an interesting way instead of just left, right, instead of just ping pong. Um, and I'd love to figure out a way, maybe using envelopes, to minimize that kind of popping noise that we're hearing at the beginning and end of each sample. I tried to mitigate that last night, didn't get, didn't get the result I wanted. I tried EQing it, it out, but that didn't really work. The 
this low pass filter. The low pass filter kind of works in getting rid of the crackle pops and stuff, but not completely. So I think what it's going to be is I'm going to put in something that ramps up the level at the beginning of each sample and down at the end so that it kind of cuts out where the pops happen and then send them through the fogger, which is, I think, the best way to, to handle that problem. So that'll be tonight or something. But let's um, let's try some different things. I'm going to shut off my mic and just play some stuff through and see what happens to it. Thank you. 
setting up to record right now just want to test, test. Okay. okay so, so you're, you're hearing probably my voice through OBS, OBS and through the, the fog machine, machine. So, so I can, I can see, see that the record, record threshold, threshold is tripping, tripping so it 
will do something with my voice. I haven't tried this yet. This is the first time I'm trying with the voice. So I'm a little apprehensive. So let's try something. Let's just try me talking. Don't know what it's going to sound like, but... Let's just listen to what it's going to do. Excuse me, my goodness. She walks in beauty like the night of starry skies and cloudy clouds. seconds and then move to another four seconds to do to do over it so that I can kind of play um this is very distracting <laughs> this is what it sounds like in my head all the time <laughs> meaningless voices so if you want to I want to make it so that you can do the first four seconds and then you can retain them and it'll keep chewing on those and then you can do another four seconds on top of that so that would mean that you could kind of layer things that's so weird Try some trumpet then.
tastes as good as bitches brew. <laughs> Just kidding. Thank you. 
Something else to do. I've got this, uh, the Buddha box by FM, FM3, I think they call them. The FM3 Buddha Machine by Christian Virant and Zhang Jian. And my brother got this for me for Christmas maybe 10, 15 years ago. And it's just, it looks like a transistor radio, but it's just an ambient sound. real fan what's going on I'm good I'm all right just been working on this thing it records sound uh, usually triggered by you know a threshold and then it throws it second by second into these four boxes these four arrays I guess samples and then it chews them up glitches them 
reverbs them, echoes them, like that. So it's kind of a hands-off, I guess, ambient glitch generator kind of thing. So I'm just I'm having fun with it right now. That's the Buddha box. If you're familiar with the FM3 Buddha Buddha machine. Just thought it's, it's a good source of sound, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna try a little bit more. You might like this, Fen, because I know you like glitchy stuff too. But you work with similar sounds, uh, so it got me thinking. You know, maybe I should do more of that kind of thing. So here we are. So here we are. It's kind of cool. It, it, I think it's useful in that it would, it would make a good tool for layering stuff I mean if instead of um, sometimes it just it's just good to set up these things and just see what cool things come out of it and then keep what's good and get rid of what's not you know yeah glitchy I really like how that sounds. I'm, I'm almost afraid to erase it, but um, I can always do it again. But earlier, I don't know. I don't know how much. Yeah, curate. That's a good word. I like that word. Kind of trim the trim the hedges here and there. You know, keep keep things from getting overgrown. Out with the weeds. Plenty of sunlight. Yeah, I, I like that. I like that analogy. Like a gardener curating something. Okay, I'm going to try a different source using the mic. My friend showed me, I think it's going making its rounds around YouTube, but uh, this guy records public doors that squeak in a certain way that sound like Miles Davis. And, um, I don't really like. I like. I love Miles Davis. Uh, um, who should be, uh, everyone should? I mean, I love Miles Davis. Um, I just don't like Bitches Brew. The album called Bitches Brew. Um, it's, I just. I and I understand it's important and good. And it has its you know historical place, but I just don't like to listen to it. <laughs> I just don't like that that funky weird vibe. You know. You know what I'm talking about. The one with all the screeching and the funky guitars and stuff. I, I, I no, not my thing. I'll take Miles Davis in the 50s and 60s, but 70s, no. no. Any, anyway, why is he talking about this? I don't know. Um, I'm just going to do some trumpet stuff and see what, what the fog machine does to it. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
get rid of those pops and uh, that's my next step. So the pops at the beginning and the end of each sample. Sometimes they work but, but I think I'm going to try to get rid of them tonight. Do some, I'm going to throw some guitar sounds in there and then chat a little more. happening with you? What you working on these days?
see. Yeah. You, I gotta make sure I know which is the on mic and off mic. Yeah, hey, Nate's here too. Yeah, you guys um, really are masters of the Ableton thing. I've never really embraced that. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's my my the fog machine the fog machine how's it going nate I, I thought aren't you going live today or tonight too is that yet to happen or did you do that already i don't think i would have missed it oh wednesdays okay Perilously close. <laughs> Perilously as in head falling on the keyboard. Perilously. Or about ready to pass out. Fall into sleep. Yes, well, I think I'm going to call it a day, well, call it a morning, and yeah, because I've been, let's see, I've been doing this for about an hour and 15 minutes, so thanks, I'm glad you guys turned up, and I appreciate you dropping by and saying hi before bedtime, yeah, I'm glad you did too. Um, yeah, so this this has uh, been a fun thing to build and play with. I just kind of finished, uh, got to this point last night. I was struggling with some basic how to, you know, how to stuff, and now and then I broke through that. Now and, and I just worked until midnight until I got this. So there are a bunch of things I want to add to it. I want to add another layer of four seconds of samples so that I can save one and then not destroy it and do something else um, and I also want to add an envelope maybe at the beginning and the end of the samples ramping it up and down uh, so to kind of mitigate the little popping noise that happens at the beginning and the end of each of these samples playbacks I don't know if plays back are going I don't know if it's going to solve the problem or make it worse or create something completely different so that's the adventure yeah, and I want to add a pan sweeper that kind of automates and I want to get a sense of, I mean, you can hear things bouncing back and forth between the right and left channels, but that's just the echo, the delay. What I want to do is make it sound like it's moving and to give a better sense of space. Yeah, I, I, I really... I really should. Uh, Izzy gets on me about that too. He's like, when's the next one? When's the next stream? I really don't know. Um, I just, I kind of told myself that I would only do this when I felt like it. Um, because if I started adhering to a schedule that I self-imposed, then I would start to resent it, and then I might turn away from it completely. <laughs> That's just how I think, how I how I work. So um, I don't I don't have a. Uh, besides you guys, who, uh, I, I love having this you know, small group of, of friends that uh, that drop in. Um, I don't, I don't want gobs and gobs of followers, and I don't think that what I'm doing is going to attract a ton of followers. And I'm fine with that, really. I just like having you guys around and you know turn up. It's kind of like the neighborhood bar that you you're a regular at and they just you just know these people who always go to the bar and you hang out and yeah it's all good norm yeah yeah i don't that, that that's what i'm afraid of I've, I've i've done a lot of things where i just i adhered to a, i had a radio show for a while uh, that and a podcast 
and I you know, felt the need to do something every week or something in the experimental music bar. Isn't that great? Isn't that a lovely place to, you want to be? Um, yep. Next round's on me, on the house. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I did this podcast and I, it was called Damn Sight Radio Busan. Busan is the city I live in. And it featured you know, people, uh, local music. And it was fun, and I did it for a long time. Um, but it just, I don't think it was very interesting enough for people to, to you know, tune in all the time. And it just kind of fizzled out, and I didn't get, you know, any response. And I learned a, a valuable lesson that don't rely on people for your satisfaction in doing what you love to do. You just, you only have, your only um, obligation is to please yourself with it. With your with your work, if you start when I start looking to outside, I don't know, support, comfort, it, I'm always disappointed. <laughs> so that's just me. So I'm not really in it to to gather a huge following. If it happens, great. Um, but you know, having you guys around, I'm, I'm more of a. I'd rather curate a small cadre of cool people to, to, that you know do the work also yeah I don't want to be let down by you know how many followers do I have and all this stuff yeah I don't even have a subscription thing going on. that's leave that there are plenty of people that do that that's their thing but I just want to enjoy doing this and when I have something interesting to show I think it's interesting I'll come on and do it and yeah and I love to watch you guys stuff and I love going on watching Izzy do his thing and yeah and Nate and you know just we got our thing Fanny does her you know uh, we watch her things on SoundCloud and stuff and that's awesome you know just bounce each other's ideas back and forth and yeah it's great it's a community so with that right on yeah Nate um yeah so I'll see you I'll see yours on Wednesday and um we'll see probably each other at on Izzy's too so I'm gonna call it on this and thanks everyone take care and stay safe stay together stay cool and see you next time bye